So yes, I guess I should say again <laughs> that I'm Eli and um, I am the founder and creative director of the operating system. And we're here celebrating Hickory and Rose Sunwater tonight. Um, and this is a global event, right? So we're everywhere, but I will acknowledge that I personally um, am here in Brooklyn, New York, which is a Lene, a Lene Lenape Munsee territory um, in Lenape Hokig. Uh, in the northeast of the United States. And if anyone else who's reading tonight wants to give a land acknowledgement, I would absolutely welcome that. Um, I am so grateful to have everybody here today. Um, and as I said before, um, we will have transcripts going and we are recording. So please do um, know that if you don't feel comfortable being on camera, you can turn your camera off. But I will turn it over to Eric Sands, who is our first reader. Hi everyone, how's everyone doing? Can everyone hear me okay? Give a thumbs up or thumbs down. Awesome, cool. Um, so my name is Eric Sines. Um, I live and work in San Francisco with my girlfriend and my cat Peggy. Um, she's adorable, but she's never around so I can't show anybody her. I apologize, she's a little, um, she has her own thing going on. Um, I'm going to be reading from Susuro Sami Padre, which came out on the operating system in 2018. Um, I haven't read from this in like a year, and so it's very interesting to be revisiting it, and I'm kind of excited to be revisiting. Um, I think that's an important process of the writing, or the, important to the writing process. Um, so usually if we we're all in person, I'd be passing out this picture uh, that's the original from the cover to everybody in the audience so I could pretend like I'm virtually passing this over to you guys. And with that, I will start. Um, the book starts with a epigraph from Lorna de Cervantes. <clears throat> they call me in words of another language. My brown body searches the streets for the dye that will cover, that will color my thoughts. <clears throat> Concerning origins. We are all birthed, my father no exception. He came from Durango. I've never been there, need to Google a map of Mexico. I stare at it for a long time, trying to locate the city, a red dot just to the right of dead center. I realize later the state is much larger than this dot I associate with his birthplace. He didn't talk much about growing up and to be honest, I never asked him. Our relationship was not the kind for casual conversations. Talks usually occurred late at night when we were both in altered states, me from sleep, him from drink, or Saturday afternoons in front of the television where soccer filled the silence. created a narrative. There was Raul, Roberto, Rosa, Concepcion, Rudy, Rafael, Estela, Rosalinda, Rene, and Ricardo. Siblings sharing space, living conditions, tiny brown bodies piled into single beds. I know them in one way or another. They all had something, distinctions. Polo tie, scarred face, temper, Jesus, alcohol. Memorias, <clears throat> Christ the King, Roman Catholic Church, stand. Towering right off Melrose, the thick of Mexican immigrants, a few blocks away, Hueros, espresso shots, vintage clothes, the Hollywood dream. Remember the pews, smooth to touch. Remember the hymn books, stale and worn. Remember the kneelers, ragged, crimson. Tia Conchas was close, two blocks south. I'd enjoy the stroll, sticky pan dulce, the clicking of dress shoes on concrete, buenos dias, echoing down the avenue. The sun and heat were unrelenting. I'd lose myself in the illuminated stained glass and shiny streams of dust, painted rose. Sit. 
I never knew if I really believed. Mostly people watched as everyone around me lowered their eyes and recited in whispers. I was absent in the words. Nearby, St. Faustina's look, damning. After we'd all congregate in front, the peace be with you turned to gossip. He'd be standing there watching, crown and all. Years later, I still smell those books and see the floating dust, still wavering. Repeat. Sorry, sticky pages. Process. January 27th, 2017. I text my mother about pictures for the cover of the book you now hold. Send me some where we're both happy, I say. She only emails one of us together and another of baby me in a white polo shirt with my childhood home in the background. Crossings. In 1956, my grandparents and six of 10 children packed up and got onto a train from Monterey, Mexico to Loreto, Texas. They crossed over the Rio Grande, natural barrier between two countries. Details are missing of their trek across the landscapes of Texas, New Mexico, and Arizona. I only know the lengthy trip ended at Union Station, Los Angeles. My father entered fourth grade. He worked after school selling newspapers in the street. He was saving to buy a bicycle. He also experienced his first taste of racism, a friend banned from hanging around those Mexicans. I wonder what other acts of racism he faced. I wonder if he slowly warmed down, toughening the skin. It would stay in the United States for a year before my grandmother decided she did not like the US. I pressed my mother and she discloses that family di dynamics were strained, the house too crowded. I suspect she never fully assimilated, didn't want to. Four went back to Mexico, including my father. He was 5,000 newspapers short of affording the bicycle. Crossings. What constitutes a boundary? Online, I find a history of the Rio Grande as natural demarcation. I learned that since 1848, the river has been acknowledged as a boundary between Mexico and the United States. On the American side, it was referred to as Grand River. On the Mexican side, another translation, Furious River. It's able to not find the irony in these interpretations. One revered protector, the other obstacle to overcome. He made the trip again in 1963, almost 18 years old, this time by bus. He enrolled in adult school to improve English. He washed dishes in a restaurant for a living. Crossings. He would spend the remaining years of his life in Southern California. He met my mother, they married. Shortly after my sister, firstborn, four years later, a son, I'm, I came nine years later after that, a footnote to a tense marriage. He worked long nights in a car manufacturing warehouse. To cope, he'd fall into drinking binges, binges, long nights and weekends. This is the version of my father I know best. Crossings. He passed in 2001 at the age of 55 from pulmonary fibrosis, a scarring of the lungs. One, imagine a topography map unfolded Two, sweep your hand across the surface. Note contrast of smooth and rough. His, his life ended at home, a quiet moment between my parents. I was off somewhere, unaware that the last words I spoke before leaving would be our last. I have one positive dream after he passes. He says he's proud of me. I don't respond. Thank you very much, everyone. Uh, this means a lot to be reading for you all and be part of this uh, whole thing. Angel is truly the poet laureate of my heart. And so I'm very excited to um, hear him speak again. Anyways, bye, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much, Eric. Thank you. Um, it's been really interesting to see the sort of the books over the last years kind of evolve and crosshatch and there's, you know, um, people writing blurbs for each other and people who did know each other or didn't know each other like through these books and 
um, you know, helping each other out, um, working especially with the Spanish sections. And it's actually been a really beautiful sort of conversation across. And so I really, this evening is so special. Thank you so much, Eric. Um, so now we will have uh, Maria and Margaret reading from Krause. Yes, our green, our green beauties, um, which is just such a beautiful book and for which we also had a really a amazing tra translingual event in New York um, a few years ago at um, McNally Jackson in Williamsburg um, with just an, an incredible group of people as well, like Irvine Noel and just a bunch of people, just beautiful. Um, and so they're going to read together. I'm not quite sure what order they're going to do, but they, they will take it away. And um, Maria and Margaret, thank you so much for being here. Hi, everybody. Good afternoon. I'm Maria Vasquez Valdez. I'm Mexican poet, editor, and translator, and I live in Mexico City. And first of all, I want to thank our dear poet and editor, Eli Simos, for organizing this event and for developing this uh, extraordinary project, the operating system. Thank you very much, Eli, for inviting me to this event and for editing this uh, beautiful book, such a beautiful edition, really remarkable. And thank you very much also to my dear friend, Margaret Randall, for sharing this reading with me and for translating Kausai into English. Um, really, I'm so grateful because it's a magnificent English version of this book. And it's an honor um, that a poet with such a trajectory and uh, importance and, as you uh, has uh, translated this book. Thank you very much for uh, joining me tonight. And thank you, everybody. Thank you, Joshua Pollock, for translating the English uh, into English, Hikuri, the, the book of our dear friend, Jose Vicente Anaya, who we miss so much uh, since last August, and from whom we're celebrating the um, anniversary of his birth this week, these days. It's an honor to share with all of you this afternoon, also with Angel Dominguez and uh, Eric Sainz for the release of Susurros Ami Padre. Thank you very much to everybody for joining us today. Well, um, Margaret and me, we, we chose uh, three poems of Kausai, and uh, I'm gonna read first in, in Spanish, and then she will read uh, in, in, in English. Thank you very much, dear Margaret. This uh, poem, this Margaret, poem. Sorry, Margaret, your sound is off, just so you know. You're muted. Yeah, okay. sorry about that. No, you're fine. But yeah, um, I'd like to say just a couple of words first, and then we can get into the reading, if that's OK. I'd just like to also thank the operating system for its extraordinary work building community and engaging us all with creative work over the years. I'd like to especially honor Jose Vicente Anaya on this anniversary of his birth. I'm so glad we'll be uh, viewing a video of him tonight. And I want to say how much it means to me to be reading with you, Maria, my dear friend and wonderful poet and translator uh, translating your uh, Kausai, The Flame of the Jungle, was a collaborative undertaking and, and a joyous one for me. Um, so I just, and of course, I want to thank the other poets. Uh, your uh, reading, Eric, was just very moving to me, and I look forward to hearing the rest of you. So um, I'll give it to you, Maria, to start with, with the reading itself.
Yes. Uh, well, uh, we're gonna share with you only three poems of this book. Uh, the first one is uh, Epifania. Crece la claridad entre la bruma que se disipa, como un gorrión entre tormentas que se levanta. Vela en la marea, semilla minúscula que contiene al mundo en espera ardiente y en silencio. Un latido musita sobre los goznes empolvados de tantos días, hoguera esperando el fuego. Y un tambor anuncia el regreso y el cuerpo vuelve a la sintonía para que la piel se abra a la llama que ondea como un corazón abierto. Vuelve el sol al cuerpo, fuego líquido que se esparce, revelación, limpieza, curación, para dar forma al viento, dar voz, dar las claves de los universos escondidos dentro, cerraduras hacia el vórtice del que procede toda forma, todo signo. Vuelve el sol, para insertarse en su sitio, magma con voluntad alta, vuelo de claridad entre la bruma que se disipa. Epiphany. As the mist dissipates, it becomes lighter, a sparrow rising between storms, a sail on the sea surge, tiny seed containing the world in ardent hope and silence. A heartbeat whispers on hinges, dusty from so much time, a hearth awaiting its fire. A dream, a drumbeat announces the return and the body rejoins harmony so that skin may embrace the flame that flutters like an open heart. Sun returns to the body, liquid fire that spreads revelation, purity, healing, giving order to the wind, giving voice, offering keys to the hidden universes in chains that lead to the vortex, preceding all form, all signs. The sun comes back to take its place, strong-willed magma, I come back through clarity, through the receding mist. Diez días. En un desnudo cuarto de madera está lo que ya no tengo. En medio de la selva amazónica, Vine a encontrar lo que soy y a dejar lo que nunca he tenido. Esta orilla del mundo no conoce la electricidad. La luz aquí es real. Llega con el sol y se va al atardecer. Un silencio exuberante hierve de verdes. Envuelve una médula de carne que es bañada por el río. Claro como un bocado de nieve derretida cantando ondinas de espuma. En esta selva se alzan las ceibas absortas en el misterio, enredando lianas, describiendo signos, lanzando su bendecida soga hacia los muertos, hacia mí. En este cuarto de madera, una vela humilde me ilumina, una cama pequeña me arropa, y una hamaca mece al amanecer. Nada más y tanto, tan solo y suficiente. Aquí los apegos se desvanecen. La frugalidad, suculenta, se pone al centro del cuerpo que durante diez días no comerá ni usará químicos, no pronunciará palabras. Un himno comienza a alzarse humilde para pedir al ser uno de sus destellos, y lo no ingerido se suma lo incorpóreo y comienza a refulgir. La inmovilidad concura lo real, diluye la ilusión, 
quiebra los turbios espejos que esconden lo que es. Silencio y ayuno llenan los vacíos, huecos desbordados de miseria inexistente. Gotas de luz florecen en un tibio aroma de canto y firmamento. Ten days. What I no longer have resides in a naked wooden room. I came to the Amazon jungle to find what I am and leave what I never had. This side of the world does not know electricity. Here light is real. It comes with the sun and departs at dusk. An exuberant silence seethes and greens, wraps around a core of flesh bathed by the river, transparent as a mouthful of melted snow, singing nymphs of foam. Lost in mystery, kapok trees rise in this jungle, tangling vines, describing signs, tossing their blessed rope to the dead. To me, in this wooden room, a modest candle illuminates me, a small bed holds me, and a hammock sways at dawn. Nothing more, and so much, only this and enough. Here, attachments fade, frugality, succulent, installs itself in the center of the body that for 10 days will not eat or use chemicals, will not pronounce words. A humble hymn begins to rise, asking the being for a bit of its glow and the not ingested joins the immaterial and begins to shine. Immobility, conjures what is real, dilutes illusion, fractures the turbid mirrors that hides, that hide what is. Silence and fasting fill the empty spaces, places overflowing with non-existent misery. Drops of light flower in a warm breath of song and firmament. En vuelo. Me sumergí en los confines de la belleza, en el sitio donde nace el río claro y profundo de la vida. En fractales todo cambió de configuración y se abrieron mundos desconocidos brillantes himnos, tambores hondos, luciérnagas de fuego. Todo está ahí y yo no lo veía hasta que me quité para que existiera. Y entonces ocurrió el milagro. Me salieron alas. El salmón alcanzó la cima tras, tras todas las tormentas. Al fin, la oruga vio la luz y se asombró de tanta suculencia y la mariposa bailó con el pulso de la tierra, describiendo dibujos encendidos de brillo incalculable. Thank you very much. In flight, I submerged myself within beauty's boundaries, in the place where the river of life emerges, clear and deep. In fractals, everything changes shape and unknown worlds appear. Brilliant hymns, profound drums, fireflies made of fire. All there, and I did not see it until I removed myself so it could exist. And then the miracle occurred. I sprouted wings, salmon made it upstream against all obstacle. Larva finally saw the light, startled by so much succulence, and the butterfly danced with Earth's pulse, describing brilliant drawings 
of incalculable light. Thank you. That was really yeah. profound. Thank you so much. Really, really super beautiful. I feel very blessed that you both were here tonight. Um, it's really wonderful to see you both and hear you. Um, so we next are going to have readings from um, Hikri. And so Josh and also Maria are going to um, introduce that reading and introduce the short clip uh, that will play from Jose Vincente Anaya as well. Um, let me make sure that you're able to share. Yes, you are. Um, so yes, I think that Josh will, um, Josh will introduce us. Uh, so next we'll have Josh Pollock, who is the wonderful translator of Hickory. Um, and yes, that yeah, here's the beautiful book. Um, maybe Josh will also tell us a little bit about this artist because this is a beautiful Mexican artist as well. All right, thank you so much, Josh and Maria. Um, thank you all for being here. Um, and thank you, Eli, for organizing the event. Um, sadly, uh, Jose Vicente Anaya passed away on August 1st and so can't be here with us. Um, but uh, it, this was Eli's idea, and I think it's a great idea that we watch a clip of him reading. Um, if you want to follow along on the PDF for the book, he will be reading um, from page 18 and 19 through 22, 23. Um, after we watch the clip, I'll read part of the translation of that, and then uh, Maria and I will go back and forth reading a different excerpt of Hikari. Uh, so let me try to figure out how to screen share. I still have it pulled up too, if you have any problems. Um, I'm having a problem. It says I would have to quit and restart Zoom. Um, okay. Where do you, what, do you know the queue? The, the... Uh, uh, five minutes, 27 seconds. Okay, give me a second. Thanks. Mm -hmm. This is why, this is why I keep it open. Uh, five minutes, 27? Yes, thank you. Okay. just gonna, it's just scrubbing. In the meanwhile, here in the, oh wait, no. I'm gonna give you that. Is it ready for us? Let's see. Okay, so I shall share. And I will also on live the transcript of the Spanish share. Ta -da. Okay. Todas las ciudades son una serie de círculos concéntricos que conducen a un corazón de acero sin palpitaciones. Esta es una verdad que repite el rito del Hikui, biznaga poderosa del todo, del bien mal, que me enseña el sitiame, quien aparece en la vereda por la que voy buscando la salida en Basiguare. En las aglomeraciones de gente y casas, nadie conoce a nadie. Todos los aparatos electrónicos controlan la vida ajena. Han metido una célula fotoeléctrica en mi cabeza Oh, Iman, de Guare, la debo expulsar. Lira llena cara cámara, no pude que me jatima. El anciano Sipiame me enseña el, comer, el silencio comunicable, invoca por mis antepasados Ramones, 
debo de danzar en el tiempo de Rayenari, cuando sale Rayena pintando de luz el horizonte. Atravesé la cara, cámara oscura de la mente y vi un gran llano cubierto de conceptos inertes incitando la gula de los buitres. La razón por callejones sin salida, repartiendo manuales a borrachos zarandeados de frío. La, los estados en un cuarto de tenebras jugando al pócar. La estupidez en un trono de espuma consistente. La ciencia con gafas negras sobre un LTD negro regalando autógrafos. La justicia chalañando en la subasta del año. La conciencia petrificada frente a un televisor. El trabajo graznando en las cabezas de todos. Rayena de Agua Buquerina. Y mi gati machaboche en Cuame Orama. Y cuí Cubi. Y cuí Moragua. Arabuco. Arabuco. Yo, Yumari solitario, dancé llamando la salida del sol. Nejeaui, Nejeaui, rellena en mis ojos, círculo blanco resplandeciente. Queda una marca vital en mis neuronas. Y te sale con mi madre, Nejeaui, 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 Estaré listo para renacer. Salto de límite, <coughs> ya no hay más ciudad luz que aquella por donde pasen Jin Yangs iluminando con poesía, danza, escultura, música, cine, pintura que descarna al alma. Fotografía que no detiene el tiempo. Si algo queda de espíritu en Europa y USA, se remuele entre dientes maniqueos. Plantas eléctricas lanzando millones de kilowatts a los cerebros y los tentáculos se extienden a las ciudades capitales. Yo vivo donde mi cuerpo está, mi domicilio exacto son los sueños y camino en la dirección en que me inclino. En ciudades oscuras, las ventanas de casa son ojos abiertos de fantasmas dormidos y los murciélagos chirrían su desgano al cielo. ¿Has visto la luna resbalar en los labios de los desesperados? ¡Balazo en el ojo! Precipitación. No preguntes si empezamos de cero. Donde todo se acaba, el todo está naciendo. Gracias. Wonderful. I'm so glad that we were able to do that. Um, so Josh and Maria. Uh, thank you for that, Eli. Yeah. Um, I'm just, I'm going to read sort of the end of the part that, uh, Jose Vicente and I read in that video. And then, um, after that, we're going to move a few pages forward in the text and Maria will start reading in Spanish and then I will follow up reading the translation. Jump over the edge. Now there's no more city light, just that spark over there where illuminated yin yangs go by with poetry, dance, sculpture, music, film, painting that scrape the soul bare, photography that doesn't suspend time. If there's anything of the spirit left in Europe and the USA, it's ground to bits between Manichaean teeth, power plants transmitting millions of kilowatts into brains and tentacles reaching out to the capital cities. I live wherever my body is. My front door opens into dreams and I walk in whichever direction I please. In dark cities, the house windows are eyes, alert to sleeping ghosts, and the bats chirp their indifference to heaven. Have you seen the moon trickle over the lips of the desperate? Bullet hole through eyeball, free fall. Don't ask if we're starting from zero. Where everything ends, the everything is born. Um, and then I'll pass it off to Maria right now. Aquí, debemos hacer el paraíso. En supercarreteras alucinamos para poder seguir viviendo. Víctor, 
Construimos la bomba antineutrones que deja la vida en pie, derrumbando edificios asfixiantes, otras máquinas trabajando por todos para que el tiempo no se eleve del gozo al arte, al gozo, y el sentido humano gobierna sin gobierno. El miedo en el museo de la prehistoria, el miedo en el museo de la prehistoria. Las rutas que seguimos, espirales sin fin hacia el amor total. Sol alumbra que mente, renace el amor. Y al atardecer, sin lluvia, un arco iris con mil tonos de verde que brillan parpadeando en la zona del trópico de cáncer. De noche, entre la selva de pinos, en tus ojos, Ruth, veo que orbitan diminutas estrellas y entramos en otro firmamento, Himmelsedit. Me convierto en agua, mezclado con el agua. Mientras navegas al mar de tu memoria para ver a una niña de paisaje naif. También en mi cara hay rostros viejos, enamorados que se fugan, fugacidad que se enamora, encontrándonos, separándonos. Lunáticos libres en el plenilunio, dos gotas de rocío sobre una seta. Son las lunas de los espejos que guardamos. Tú femenina, masculina. Yo masculino, femenino. Prendimos los horizontes. Mutua envolvencia de viento abrazado con el viento, pero en titilación de nuestros tactos. Delirio. Caminatas por calles de la noche, dejando un resplandor en las pisadas. Llega el amanecer, lloviendo besos. Subimos en autobuses sin horario. Sierra Zapoteca, entre olores, melón, mango, guayaba. Sudor y confusión de lenguas durmiendo hacia lugares donde escapa el tiempo en precipicios sin números ni manecillas. Here we should make paradise. On superhighways we hallucinate in order to carry on living, Victor. Let's build an anti-neutron bomb that leaves buildings standing, that leaves life standing, demolishing, suffocating buildings. New machines working for everyone, so that time raises us from joy to art to joy, and humanity governs without government. Fear relegated to a forgotten reliquary. Fear relegated to a forgotten reliquary. The paths we take, endless spirals towards total love. Scorching sun shines forth, love reborn. And at dusk, without rain, a rainbow with a thousand shades of green that shimmer twinkling in the zone of the Tropic of Cancer. At night in the pine tree wilderness of your eyes, Ruth, I see minuscule stars orbiting and we penetrate another firmament, Himmelzelt. I become water mixed with water while you sail the sea of your memory to see a girl from a naive landscape. There are ancient traces on my face too Lovers that flee, fleetingness and love. We come together, we drift apart. Lunatics loose under a full moon. Two dewdrops on a mushroom are the silver moons of the mirrors we maintain. You, feminine masculine. Me, masculine feminine. We ignite the horizons. Mutual entwinement of wind embracing wind but in the trembling of our touches, delirium walks through nocturnal streets, leaving luminous footprints. Sunrise arrives, raining kisses. 
We board wayward buses, Sierra Zapoteca, amid odors, melon, mango, guava, sweat and confusion of tongues, sleeping towards places where time has broken loose, chasms without numbers or hands. Trópico de cáncer. La alquimia en las pupilas transmutó. Los climas si miraste en verano la ciudad nevada. Aves que dejan señales en el aire. Nos despedimos con todo nuestro amor. Y ahora, reloj o avión quedaron abolidos por la ternura que nos dimos. Cuando tocas el agua desde tus manos va creciendo el mar. Sin embargo, hay muerte. La hora en punto está piada. El unicornio traspasa una lanza azul y puede ver que el sol pierde su brillo. De día lloran golondrinas de acero con sus alas en nubes claveteadas. De noche quedó revoloteando en la pantalla la paloma de níquel. Las ruinas de esa razón se esconden debajo de pelucas que piensan por sí solas. Mi mente dicta estruendos que atraviesan de rayo la feria de la mercancía. Marcado por el tedio, ¿qué importa cuando empiezan las cosas? ¿Qué importa si van a terminar? En la mirada surgen sucesos que se esfuman. Estoy en el territorio de los desquiciados, Barrio de ladrones, prostitutas, adictos. No es nada. Lejos, muy lejos de aquí. Calles con robots que anhelan hallar sus alter egos en revistas, libros, películas. Y aquí, aquí, no es más que un último rincón del mundo. Busco los lugares que no existen. Mi generación lo ha probado todo. Araña funcional teje su red, nido de alimentar a conformistas. Los nunca vencidos están fuera de la realidad de la vida. O girando de manicomio en cripta en manicomio. Bebo el licor más amargo. Tras el ventanal grotesca, la anciana ebria manotea frente a unos monos. Ella les da la espalda sobándose una nalga. La escena sucede en el mismo lugar donde ayer el hombre esquizofrénico charlaba entusiasmado con la columna de cemento. Cavando vacío en el vacío, voy a la zona de desastre, navegando en mi poema por las venas del mundo. Vida de paria, poema de los piratas para los gatos negros, para las tribus nómadas, para los genios utópicos, para los pulsos sin reloj. Estoy con los seres muertos en las causas perdidas. Veo sus arañazos de desesperación marcados en la nada. Y en el grabado, bóveda celeste, se quedan transparentes sus huellas persistiendo. Huelo esas ropas sucias de sudor, de polvo y sangre, como si apenas hoy se destrozaran las amapolas de sus ojos. Son seres reales, surgiendo de muchas destrucciones, que derrumban estatuas, palacios, catafalcos y los patíbulos que hacen los gobiernos. Nada más es perenne la utopía, se filtra. Tropic of Cancer. The alchemy in your pupils transmuted the elements, and you saw the summertime city covered in snow. Birds that leave traces in the air. We say goodbye with all of our love, and now clock or airplane remained abolished by our tenderness. When you touch water, the sea swells from your hands. Nevertheless, death exists. The time frame is fucked up. Unicorn run through by a blue spear and it sees the sun lose its shine. By day, 
steel swallows cry with their wings in studded clouds. By night, the nickel-plated dove still circling on the screen. The ruins of that reason are hidden beneath wigs that think for themselves. My mind commands thunderclaps that strike lightning through the flow of commodities. Stark tedium. What does it matter when things begin? What does it matter if they're going to end? Evanescent events emerge from the gaze. I'm in the territory of the deranged, district of thieves, prostitutes, addicts. It's nothing. Far, far away from here. Streets with robots longing to find their alter egos in magazines, books, films. And here? Here is but a distant corner of the world. I search for places that don't exist. My generation has tried everything. A practical spider weaves its web, a nest that nurtures conformists. The unconquered are outside of reality, of life, are rotating from madhouse to mausoleum to madhouse. I drink the bitterest liquor. Behind a large window, grotesque, the elderly alcoholic waggles herself in front of a few apes. She turns away from them, squeezing an ass cheek. The scene transpires in the same place that yesterday, the schizophrenic chatted enthusiastically with a column of cement. Excavating vacuity from vacuity, I'm going to the disaster zone, sailing my poem through the veins of the world. Pariah's life, pirate's poem, for the black cats, for the nomadic tribes, for the utopian geniuses, for the irregular heartbeats, I stand with the dead in their lost causes. I see the scratch marks of their desperation etched into the nothing, and in the engraved celestial sphere, their persistent traces remain transparent. I smell those clothes soiled with sweat, with dust and blood, as if just today the poppy pods of their eyes were ruined. They are real beings rising up out of immense destruction to demolish statues, palaces, catafalques, and the gallows the governments erect. Nothing else is perennial. Utopia seeps in. Espíritu que se destruye en el objeto. La posesión es aire, abismo. La vida se hace trozos, rompecabezas en el sueño. Engaño en la finitud, claustro de pensamientos. Tiento esta oscuridad. ¿Qué hago aquí? ¿Qué quiero? Lo dejé todo. Atrás se quedan signos y cosas, ataduras. Voy a la incertidumbre con certeza de terminar incierto, incandescente. Las ciudades me esperan con sus trampas. He roto el odio, la venganza y medí los kilómetros del miedo. ¿Qué hay más allá del centro? Me dejo conducir por mi ansiedad. Detrás de mí se van quedando velocidades de luces apagadas. En universos interiores, la eternidad estalla. Y el alma toca lumbre con sus llamas. No existen muros, no hay abajo ni arriba. Infierno y paraíso, esta conciencia, otra razón que no es razón. Silencio, oscuridad clara, azul, claridad oscura, abre la herida, puñal invisible. Qué pesadumbre, ¿por qué estoy? Partículas del polvo son planetas. Tocó en puertas de sombra. Nada, ni el sueño vidente de la vida queda. ¿Qué? Spirit destroyed an object. Property is air, abyss. Life shatters to pieces, puzzles in a dream. Deception of finitude, cloister of thoughts. I feel my way through the darkness. What am I doing here? What do I want? I abandoned everything. Signs and forms remain behind, restraints. I go into uncertainty, certain of ending up uncertain, incandescent. 
cities lie in wait for me with their traps. I've worn out hatred, vengeance, and traversed kilometers of fear. What is beyond the center? I let my anxiety lead me. The speed of lights extinguished fades into the distance behind me. In interior universes, eternity explodes and my soul touches fire with its flames. Walls do not exist. There is no below, no above. Hell and heaven is consciousness. Another unreasonable reason. Silence, clear darkness, blue, dark clarity. Open the invisible stab wound. What grief, why I am. Particles of dust are Particles of dust are planets. I knock on doors of shadow. Nothing. Not even the clairvoyant dream of life remains. Whoa. We are fucked. All of you. Ta Rafael Cabrera. Uh, thank you so much, Mario, for reading with me. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much, Joshua, for translating this amazing book of Jose Vicente Anaya. Thank you both so much. This is just um, truly, this is really beautiful. Um, and um, I'm really glad that we were able to honor um, Jose Vicente tonight, um, especially with his passing this year. And thank you, Maria, for reading so beautifully. Um, so our final reader of the evening will be Angel, and we hoped that we would have the physical book tonight, but um, production is not necessarily on our end, actually production just on the production end is slow and there was only so much that we could do, but the book is on its way and I will also put in the chat, you can actually, because of the production delay um, on the printer side, you can actually still order for pre-order, so I will put that in the chat and um, Angel is going to read for us. I'm so excited. Angel. Hello. Hello, hello. Thank you, Eli, for coordinating this wonderful constellation of energy and poetry. And it felt so special to be able to see Jose Vicente do his thing and like catch that trance. Like it was the energy moving through him. Um, and Josh, I, it was an honor to blurb your book. Um, I really loved the way that you treated Jose Vicente's words. And I felt, um, I don't usually blurb books um, of translation um, because I'm very particular about who I, who I put my name next to. And I'm like very happy to have done it for you and to see the care with which um, you took with all of those poems, that wild delirium, that beautiful energy. Um, and I'm just so excited to see it out in the world. Um, thank you, Eric, so much, compa, for reading. Um, I was really hoping he would read some new poems. Yeah, I'm calling you out on this because I can't. Um, I was really hoping he'd read some new poems too. I really love Susuros. I blurb Susuros. It's a wonderful book. Don't get me wrong. I would tattoo that book on my thigh if I could. Um, it's longer than my thigh as I'm a very short person. Um, which you can't tell on Zoom, which is nice. So you can imagine I'm as tall as you'd like, um, but I'm very small. Um, Maria and Margaret, thank you so much for those poems. Those poems will live inside of me for a very long time. Um, and I, so like, I'll just be honest with you all. Like I have this very bad habit of like putting my money where my mouth is. And like, so everybody's always like, oh, poetry's so healing, writing's so healing, blah, blah, blah. Right, I, I believe the same things. And time and again, I find myself in these overwhelmingly stressful situations in which I like have to do a poetry thing or like poetry is like coming into my life. And I'm always like, okay, if poetry is so healing, if poetry is this, if poetry is that, perhaps I will feel nourished by doing this thing. And so here we are, day six of power. And I just, of no power, sorry, I live in um, the Santa Cruz mountains. We haven't had power for six days. And so I'm um, in a secret location, not that my employer needs to know where I am right now, uh, but, <laughs> but I feel so energized and nourished by tonight's reading. Um, and just by seeing all of you, like so many of you that I know um, and don't know, it's just very wonderful to like come together 
in this moment, in this way. Um, and I'm just very grateful for this moment, for tonight, for this evening, for all of you. Um, and I have to say, it's been like a long time dream to release a book with Rose Sun, uh, with, with the operating system and Rose Sun Water was kind of like always the one in my brain. I was just like, I don't really know anyone that could, that, that could see what is here. Um, and I just like really want to note that like uh, working with Eli um, these last few weeks, months um, and Brent um, especially have just like really helped me see this, this text, this book. Um, and I'm just very grateful for those energies and those efforts um, because uh, very much in the way like it takes a village, right? Like it, it really does, it takes kin. It takes a family, it takes, it takes people, it takes poets, it takes a collection of energy. Um, and I have always admired that about the operating system, which is very much tied to community and kin. Um, so rather than just give a keynote about like gushing over the OS and everyone here, I will now read um, some things from this book. And Eli is being very kind. Part of the reason we don't have the book right now is because of me. It's okay. Um, you know, 2020 got in the way, ran into a bear, there was a fire, it was a whole thing. Um, but I'll introduce myself as I do in the, in the text. And so I'm Angel Dominguez, a Latinx smudge of spirit and flesh, blessed to still be alive in this very moment, moving through this reality ever onwards born in Los Angeles, raised by my entire Yucateco immigrant family from Hollywood to Van Nuys. I'm the oldest of five, driver of many highways and lover of tacos. Um, if you ever wanna to talk to me about tacos, I would love to talk to you about tacos. And until then, I'm going to read you. Um, this is called Dear Book. This is uh, I think the third or fourth section from where we begin. Um, I'm standing? I don't know if you can tell, I'm standing, and this is, I, I like to stand when I read. Um, so this is Dear Book. Surely the puncture mark must work both ways. If the present is ever past, always departing, what then do we make of the future? Or rather, how do we make a future out of the rubble of almost? I mostly think I'm tethered to those sidewalks and those cracks form an autobiography where the roses figure the concrete. I get weak knees thinking of who transfigures what and will we live to see the rain? Look how long the days are. I can't explain to my body what happens when I, I keep trying to write the same book, which is not a book. There's a translation of Clarice Lispector's Agua Viva with a line that reads, quote, there is much I cannot tell you. I am not going to be autobiographical. I want to be bio. I too want to be bio here with you. What is the gesture needed to compress the body until it becomes the page? How might we recapture the spirits of lived experiences here? Sometimes I hear a train call out to the ocean from the redwoods. Sometimes a small mountain town street calls out my name with no one there. Sometimes I let myself sleep and become the rain elsewhere. The stream is slow. The days are weeks or months and eventually the totality of time becomes compressed or flattened by the motions of living. There's only so much scale we can comprehend before it bursts apart. The stone is alive in my hand just as this sentence lives beyond my inevitable transmission. Or is it translation, perhaps transfiguration, to become the planet again, spiraling towards the center of a larger spiral? I got sick of writing letters to myself, so I got around to talking to people. Sometimes I feel like I might remember snippets of the future and I can see it. These Tiny and sueños, like a mirror speckle of a minnow emerging between the murky water and its surface. Sometimes I let myself become the rain. The rhythm grows to fit the room. Sometimes I let the lemon trees talk to me in my dreams. Mostly it's about the things they fail to mention before they're torn out of the earth, before the seed my grandmother planted reverses back into itself, back into her hands, never to be planted. I fear the constant flattening of the city, the way these posters and flyers remain locked in a circuitous wreckage. For a long time, I dreamt of writing a kind of entanglement, a window reflecting a window while also maintaining the image beyond each window. And I'd like to think it's a little bit like living. See, roses, much like rain, seem to follow me wherever I go. 
I've grown to love these brief salutations between living things. The rain is older than everything. I've been thinking less and less about the architectures and more and more about the trees, the idea of trees, how the acorn is the oak, how the seed is the tree without time. Is that a book? In my dreams, there's a language that keeps reaching outside of itself. My dreams keep telling me things about other people's dreams. And sometimes I think we're intertwined by this celestial rhizome that extends beyond the planet and into other planes of thinking and being. And somewhere between Earth and this connection is where the writing is happening. Or at least it's where the intersection occurs in such a way that opens a space for writing. As the rain softens the particular, the trees sigh sleepy with exhale. I warp these words to fit a disc in my spine. Celestun 823. This morning I went straight to the Gulf. I only meant to sit at the beach and read, maybe write, but found myself called to the sea, so I went in. The Gulf holds so many memories, Celestun too. This is the last beach I would ever visit with Sheesh. I'm staying two doors down from where we ate at the foot of the beach. This sea is plentiful in its fish, conch, and octopus. Celestun is perhaps most well known for its flamingos. This morning, the swallows are buzzing like butterflies, how they soar with one another over the sea. I've traversed across the peninsula from east to west in a sort of pilgrimage. The pelicans dive in the distance. I've driven these highways and pueblos and jungles into my body. The green shines through my blood. Four kids go snorkeling where I was just swimming. In the sea of my lungs, I taste salt. The fishermen talk to one another. The beach is lined with shells and conches compressed from memory, less than I remember, and yet more plastic detritus. The children snorkeling are so happy. Their parents arrive and take photos. Somewhere in the distance beyond this beach, you sigh a little song to yourself. You soften the beach I write this on before the children emerge for air. So much of this, everything, opens me. Here I am, 12 years later, land of my sheesh. En realidad, el libro nunca está completo porque el libro también es un tipo de sueño. Nosotros somos sonámbulos. Caminando juntos con estas palabras como un encanto. No te olvides a tomar un poco de agua. No te olvides a descansar hasta si es unos cinco o diez minutos. En este libro estoy construyendo un otro casa con dos hamacas y una huerta. Estoy tratando de construir otro lugar en donde puedes descansar y pensar más en el misterio de la vida. Quiero que tienes tiempo a escuchar las canciones de Pedro Infante. Cierra los ojos y deja que tus pensamientos se convierten en nubes. Recuerda los momentos más preciosos y si tienes el tiempo, escríbelos. En esta escritura, adentro del libro, hay tiempo para escribir. Hay tiempo a descansar y soñar, pero solo si lo quieres. Este libro es un tipo de casa. I have a dream in which my grandmother becomes a bird. And I'm gonna read one more piece. Am I doing okay on time, Eli? I, we're great, cool. Um, so I have like read a good amount of this book over the year. Um, like in various Zoom readings, once while evacuated and in Paris, California, I agreed to do a reading for the Brooklyn Rail at 10 in the morning, like two weeks after just having to leave my home at 1.30 in the morning. It was great. It was fine. It was wonderful. Um, but this is a piece that I never read. Um, and I want to read it today, tonight, right now with you, whatever now is, right? Time. What is time? It's not. It's not. Um, and this just feels very special. Um, so I think I'm, I'm, I'm going to close with this. Um, and this is called, if not a future, then what? A present? It's actually my favorite part of the book. Might be the end, I don't know. <laughs> what do you place between the book and yourself? The city in my dreams is not my city, but the way I keep my city alive in my mind's eye. In the city of my dreams, the orchard remains untouched, still standing. 
The city I grew up in does not exist, nor has it ever. Cities are constant and unraveling, not fixed and yet immovable. There's a minutia at work across the spectrum of light I experience. Maybe you've seen it too, the tug of the way things could have been, how the ancillary realities splinter moments so easily. What if you had answered your phone or left a few minutes later? What if you didn't sign your name or didn't leave? Or what if you kept becoming? The resonance is part sunlight, by which I mean mostly moon. The mirror made of earth rib, only earth is all mothers, to have vacated the time stream, having only half read things, there comes another way of seeing by feeling energetic osmosis by proxy. We might be folding time in this small moment of language and breathing. In the after of it all, Time fluctuates across multiplicities of realities. Sometimes we slide into another dimension, daydreaming as we murk down the highway, not pummeling, but tunneling forward through time and geography. Some days I wonder what the sky thinks of me. I worry that the clouds feel too heavy to themselves and I wonder if the sun has anxiety. I'm always in a rain, it seems. Seems I am so much highway and forgetting. Sometimes I feel obvious. Sometimes I find the salt in the air and know where the ocean will go. I had to leave the mountains to find myself again. On the orchard, time moves differently. The cactus turns to goo under the abundance of rain. Then there's the camellias again. There's that mirror again, positioning language in such a way that our temporal dissonance finds it's harmonies. I need you to sing with me. I need you to believe me. We can fold this temporal track and you can sit next to me on this bus as we carve out the edge of a continent. Hold me down like language holds rain. These words eat each other and we breathe when we need to. Language is ever emergent, mercurial. The whole sequence is like static in the waves. Celestone shimmers in my breathing. I pour a pound of salt out of my eyeballs and exhale 12 miles of sand for you to walk along. I am always this much beach. I am always this much space. Even when I'm working, even when I'm crying, even when I'm alone, I am cosmic imprint heavy with the memory of that which ails me, that which I have failed to do. In my dreams, I drive from here to Merida. I drive from here to 2006. I drive from here to where you are now. We form a new language from our distant dissonance. I am never on time. A cenote opens up to eat the house, to keep it safe. The house is with the ancestors now. The inhabitants scatter across the city void and beyond. The pitaya becomes several palms around the city. The roses explode out across the landscape, blossoming in the rain before evaporating along with the water. The aguacates lend themselves to immigrant households to keep their families fed. The lemons scatter along with the oranges to form two new tints of sunlight that always look like mama's lemons and shisha's oranges. The colors of the house become other times of day, lilting memories from the soul of those who know how precious this dream can be. I tattoo the wallpaper to my body. I dig a hole where I keep every stone safe. The house itself evaporates into the rain that does not end, by which I mean all our dreams become clouds to nourish the future, to nourish our ancestors and those who are gone but still roaming within us. I have a dream where I drive the entirety of the grid while the city sleeps. I work the city sleep into a type of fabric, a craft, a shawl. Quiero hacer una tilma de los ángeles y el poder de sus sueños. No me quiero olvidar de nada cuando llega el tiempo a soñar otro sueño. Quiero ser como un hilo de luz a construir los sueños con los vidas, los tiempos. No quiero que nadie se olvida. Somos flores que crecen. There are more words right now than there have ever been before. 
I think eventually I'll learn to let go of the city or I will become the city. There is no in between. Many that melts into the mountain or as the clouds skim the microclimate, the image of the peninsula dribbles, drizzles prismatic by the morning sunlight. It's in these moments that I see you most clearly when the sky opens up its portals, when the light leans into you. We converse in these moments of liminality our language is a strong light that guides spirits home beyond the structure of the house. Light a candle tonight with the intention of hope beyond hope. Let me say that again. Light a candle tonight with the intention of hope beyond hope. Leave it burning until the wax has ended its verticality. What do you see? When this now becomes before, in the valley of your spine lies a harvest of endocrine flowers that give you a new soft life. You Tend to them by taking it easy on yourself, learning to cry, returning to write, writing this book together right now. I dreamt that we wrote that. I keep nodding off into the spiral like 6 a.m. fingertips touching a stream, both frozen and running. Here is the continuity to the way these electrons hum. The swaying of the pen keeps reversing its order, forming other portals and words I don't know. The rain taps at your window and triplets on a bus or airplane. The atmosphere grows a language to understand itself. As the house is destroyed, its components become dispersed across the city. 10,000 palm trees become stories for pitayas to assemble, blossoming in the moonlight and giving others language. We water them with it. The bricks replace other bricks across the city on both sides of the hill, forming a nexus of echoic memory. In the moment of oblivion, three crops of aguacates instantly withered in the hands of the gentry. They could only taste battery acid and earth. The flowers floated themselves into clouds and brought rain down through the grid of territory. I hope it's raining in Los Angeles right now. That's just from me to you, Los Angeles. At the end of the orchard, nothing makes as much sense as when the orchard appeared beside the lone airstrip in the redwood forest, which itself was an opaque dream bereft of a waking logic. The trees go, grow smaller as the plot of earth begins to swirl. Slow as the solstice sun, the structures unmake themselves and the boards of the homes become trees unpainted, not nailed. The architectural components rejoin the unangled shapes of the soil. The acreage tips over into the ravine only to remain suspended between the spiral of soil and sky. The language lingering between your lungs and your mouth. What changes when you speak these spells out loud? How will you go on living now? What, if anything, has changed? How will you change? What will you grow into? Who will you continue becoming? Time to wake up and get to it. Thank you. I would invite everyone, thank you so much, Angel. If you would all just put your mics on for a second and maybe do a little bit of like celebratory noise just for all of the readers. A little like amazing. Yeah, the crowd, the crowd. amazing, beautiful, amazing and profound. Thank you, such a gift. Thank you. Such seriously, such a such a beautiful reading on hell, and such beautiful readings from everyone. Sometimes I feel like I um, have the luckiest role at the OS because I spend so much time with all of these incredible books and I forget that everyone isn't also spending all this time with these incredible books and you know um, we are we run on a shoestring and so my goal has always been to bring books out into the world and make it happen and make it possible and not spend you know the money doesn't go towards you know getting things reviewed and that sort of thing. It just goes to making them exist so that they have the chance to be in the archive. And so people don't have to put their effort or their money into, you know, uh, into uh, contests and fees. There's never been contests and fees. And so, you know, sometimes when you see books doing really well, you don't even think about the fact that there is someone being paid for PR at all the presses. And that's why those books are doing really well, you know? And so like, love these books. I hope that you get them. I, you download them for free and use them with your classes and then give these people money to come to your classes. Um, and just, I'm just so grateful for the people that I have um, 
had an opportunity to work with and everyone in this room is just so wonderful. Um, before people start sort of popping off, um, I will do a couple of things. And one of them is that I'm just gonna share, I don't know if people have been following, but some people in this room and a lot of OS folks are now teaching for Liminal Lab. So those are all totally open access classes. They're totally sliding scale. There's like 10 of them coming up starting soon. Um, you know, and so you can sign up for free, you can pay, you can do whatever you want, you can tell your students to sign up. Um, so please, you know, do do that. And um, lastly, just like one little call, we now you're actually now able to become a member of the operating system or liminal lab. And if you do that, yeah, okay, it's all already free. But if you do that, uh, you can take everything for free, you can download everything for free, and you know that you're helping us stay alive. So I put that there as well. And I just want to open the floor if anyone has any comments, if any of the readers want to say anything about each other, if anyone from the audience just wants to be like, yay, that was beautiful. Um, a little bit of time for me to stop. Um, I just want to say thank you to Angel, Maria, Margaret, Eric. That was amazing, all of you. Really appreciate it. Yes, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Really, thank you, Ellie. Th Eli, I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> thank you, Margaret. Thank you, Joshua, Angel, Eric. Such an honor to be here and everybody. Thank you. So beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. This gave me the energy and strength to sleep in my office tonight. So. Everyone say a little prayer, send some energy <laughs> for Angel's power going back on. Um, we wish that for you, Angel. Or curse PG&E, either or. I accept both. I like totally understand. Um, <laughs> no, this was so wonderful. This was so beautiful. Like this, my heart is so full. It's raining right now. Ooh, you asked for Los Angeles, but it came to you. Son of a... <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so there's a couple of people in the audience right now. Uh, Joey De Jesus has a book coming out, Hoax, this year. Stephen Alvarez has a book coming out, Mahat Tidlan this year. Um, some really, really beautiful stuff is coming out. Uh, there's a really amazing 2021 cohort, and all of those people are working collaboratively on a new open source design protocol, which also is available through the OS. So if you guys want to do what the OS does, all of what we have on the inside is coming out on the outside. And so everyone can now work through what I do with people because I can't do it with everyone, but you can now do it with us. So there'll soon be videos, there's tools. And you know, if you want to use that stuff, it's there for you. Um, we are hoping to scale through other means, through the system. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm just going to sit here, probably just talk into the void. Joey, I love you, and I can't wait for your book. I've, I've been excited about this since we met up in Philly. What seems like 10 million years ago? Time. Might just be 1,000, but who knows, you know? I, <laughs> I'm excited for everyone's books this that year. That was amazing. Yeah, that. <laughs> that was such, I like, like, I just have, that memory is like a, a precious crystal that I keep. So I think. I, back on it often and I'll just never forget Raquel Salas introducing you as mm -hmm. this de Jesus will fight you in the street and that's <laughs> oh we're friends forever that's this is <laughs> immediate um yes I too will fight you in the street I will fight you alongside Joey <laughs> well that tonight was beautiful 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 I don't know if you saw, but Margaret wrote in the chat, poets have infinitely more power than PG&E, which I just <laughs> love so much. And I would just like to call that into the room. Thank you, Margaret Randall, who has left. Um, Margaret has, I should have actually said, I have a stack of the book. Margaret has translated like five books for the operating system. She is a force, an absolute force of nature. Um, Yes, she's so wonderful. Uh, yeah, anyone else? We're so happy you're here. Oh, we need to do another translingual one with Brent and Lalan and other people. We have so many books. 
And I'm free making out the pre-orders, yes? Yes. yes. So if you pre some of them. It'll, it'll come, some of them will come from my hands. Signed. Signed. Well, we never discuss sign. I mean, I know. <laughs> if they're coming from you, essentially. I'm going to draw on them and sign them. Yes. Special, special editions coming straight from our house. Style on it. And Eric, you're working on sort of small press stuff, right? Are you releasing something yourself? I think you are. Yes, yes? Uh, yeah, I'm releasing a book of poems that I wrote in uh, quarantine. Um, and it's actually at the printer, so it'll be out uh, soon, I guess. But, we love a DIY, yay. Yeah, do it yourself, et cetera. Um, I'm excited about that. We'll see what happens. <laughs> Thank you for shouting that out. Yeah, of course. Anyone else want to share something they're doing? Oh, shout out Matthew Olmos, an amazing musician, ambient, uh, and beat maker, and noise and circuitry um, on Bandcamp, Endor, really great stuff. Part of Rose and Water was written to a beat tape that he made. So shout out, Matt. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> really appreciate that. Had we known, I would have had you, MC. <laughs> oh, no, it's OK. <laughs> I, I owe you an email, too. I owe you an email for like forever. So I'll just same, same, same. I, I have a five cassette ambient box that I'm working on. I'm going to send you a copy when that's done. So we all want it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is so great, y'all. Thank, thank you, everyone, again. Like this, this really, you would not believe the mood I was in when we started. <laughs> Well, I'm going to stop the recording. So thank you, but you are all welcome to hang out.